Um, okay, now again, I, it's important here to just keep an overall sense of what you're doing. Remember, if we're looking at the map here, kind of, you know, left to right, what we're seeing is we're on top of a hill, we're going down to a river, going back up over this ridge, right? And it's gonna be flat up here, mostly flat. Okay, down again to another river, up again to this ridge, mostly flat, down again, and then there, okay? So I expect this to go down, up, down, up, down, up, down, up, all right? And that ought to be reflected in what I do here. Once I'm to this point, I don't really need my map anymore. I'm gonna keep it kind of closed just so if I get confused, I can find something. But what you're gonna to wanna to do is you're gonna to wanna to create a frame, okay? And that simply means to draw a dark line that's going to be the, the frame of the uh, cross section you draw. Now, you do want to do a little bit of thinking here um, and you want to find your highest and lowest point. So my highest point is going to be 1527. And since we're going by 20s, I'm going to want to go all the way up to 1540 would be the, the 20 that's, that's going to give me room to fit this in. And then my lowest point is 1380. But because I don't want this coming down exactly to this line, I'm going to make my lowest point 1360. That way my whole cross section is going to be above this. Okay, so 1360 is going to be my starting point here. And we're just going to go up by 20 until we get to 1540, our highest point. And then we're going to want to make dark lines all the way up that axis so we have a good defined place to work. Like so. Okay, we can bring it around until we're finished. Now it's time to start plotting. So our first point, what we're gonna start with is this 1527, okay? And that's gonna go right on the axis and you know, halfway between 1520 and 1540 would be 1530. So it's probably just right about here, okay? In the book they tell you to do X's, but I kinda like dots, so I'm gonna do it my way, okay? Our next point, 1520, we're going to need a ruler and we're going to pull it straight up. Okay, so straight up from there is going to be our next point on that line. Okay, remember from here on out, the left and the right, we're going to have to pull straight up, but the up and the down, the y-axis is always going to be onto a grid line, okay, until we get over here to the end. All right, so right there on that point. Okay, go to our next contour, right here, 1500. Okay, and that's gonna be right there. Okay, so we see that's a pretty steep drop right there. Okay, the next one's 1480. And that's right about on that grid line, so that's gonna be easy enough. In fact, I'm just gonna use that, might as well. 1480 is there. Okay, 1460, again, I'm lining up my dot on the bottom and going up to the line that says 1460, which is right there. Good sharp pencil helps here. If you have an ever sharp, a, uh, you know, a uh, mechanical pencil, that might be the best. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and start putting in these other areas too, okay? Now I'm gonna keep this at the same elevation and let's use a little different mark so that I don't connect these later on. Okay, let's do this. And then we're gonna do this. Remember they're all the same, all the same elevation because we haven't gotten to our next contour yet. And if I were building a road, I'd probably build it through a flat part. And this is kind of three roads coming together, if you remember. And again, this is why it's kind of helpful to have, you know, to have your, your map still there. Because if it doesn't make sense, I can go look real quickly and go, oh yeah, it's, it's you know, there's our, there's our three roads. And really it was this loop. Okay, so this is the same road I'm seeing now. And then the main road here. Okay, so that's all that's getting at. All right. Um, okay. We're to our next contour, so that's 1440. All 
right? So that's going to be... Oh, I see I put those too high now. But again, that's an easy thing to fix. I can just bring it down here real quickly. And erase those in a second. Okay, so now 1440, there. All right, and that's gonna be right here. And I'll go ahead and finish off and let you guys catch up. Okay, I've got all my points marked and I'm ready to start connecting them and, and that's pretty easy. Um, one thing that we do need to be careful of as we do this, so I'm gonna show you just real quickly. When we have these that are the same height in a row, if I just connect them and show that it's perfectly flat, that may or may not be very accurate. So let's go back and look at uh, our, exactly what we're doing here. Okay, so again, there's my starting point, and there's my finishing point. You don't have to be perfectly lined up for this. Okay, just, so you, just enough so that you can see exactly what you're looking at. So, these one, two, three, four, five, remember all five of those are this dark red line going through. Okay, so we've got The three of them in a row are the ones that we're really concerned about, okay? Because we still do want to show, you know, that it's not perfectly flat from here to there or from there to there, okay? Now, remember, since it, since it only goes every 20 meters, the contours in-betweens aren't necessarily shown. So let's look right here, first of all, between these first two. So we're looking at just this point right here. Well, again, it's easy to see when I look at those two that in between those there's a river so it must be going downhill to that point okay and then keeping this point and the next well again we see that that's going to be a rather flat area but it's probably safe to assume since we do see a contour line kind of just above where we're mapping that it is going uphill this way so when we connect these, so again, that's these three, one, two, three. When we connect these, we're gonna want to not connect them straight, but show a little bit of coming down for that. And even though I didn't mark it before, I'm gonna go ahead and mark here that there's a river. It just seems to make sense and seems to give me a better overall picture. And then this, remember, is going uphill just a touch. So we're gonna connect that going uphill just a little bit, all right? We have the same problem here and here. So going back to where we started, again, we can just kind of line these up because that works pretty well. Well, again, for these two, we can see there's a river in the bottom of that, so that's gonna be going downhill just a bit. And then this one again, we can see that it's going uphill to this next contour line. So we're gonna show that connected just that way. And then this one is actually at the same height too, even though I didn't point that out before. And again, what we can see is that road is beneath that contour. So that's why I've got this road shown just a little bit beneath, and I am gonna have this kind of come down through as I connect my dots, okay? The rest are all fine. I don't need to worry about that with any of the rest of them. I guess over here where we're looking at this, uh, this road complex, which is kind of right in here, we do see that, you know, the roads are kind of in between those two. I don't know, to be honest, I'm not too worried about it, all right? So the rest we can just connect. And if you feel confident enough to do this with, you know, freehand, that's fine. If not, you can use a ruler, obviously. I might use a ruler for this next one because it's kind of long. And remember at the beginning when I said we should predict exactly how it's going to look? 
and I said it's going to go down, then up, then down, then up, then down, then up, or something like that, we can revisit that and see if that took place. And sure enough, it did. Down, then up, down, then up, and down and up. Okay? So, you know, again, it's good to see that our predictions came out to be kind of like what we expected. Now, I will say there's something about this that I don't like. And if I were going to do this again, I would actually switch it because I, I think it's giving a bit of distortion to my map. Um, and, and that's that the scale is, even though it's right, the scale is a little bit too, uh, too big. So if I were going to do this again, instead of doing intervals of 20 meters, I would maybe make each block on the grid paper um, 40 meters. And that would take this and just sort of squeeze it down a little bit, which is probably a little bit more accurate. Uh, to what the landscape really looks like. But what I've done here is no problem. Um, I do see that I forgot to connect my last dot. Now we're good. Um, and I, and we, we, I've got a good map here. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and want to put this other information on. I also did this cultivated land, and that's the real problem. I'm showing this cultivated land kind of up here, and I doubt that cultivated land is built onto this, you know, real steep downhill. It's probably a much more, you know, simple slope. Okay, so I'm going to put all this information up um, and I'm going to be done. And there's my finished product. So you can see that I've got um, several geographic features included. You can see that there's a good variety of slope and uh, great work by me. Yay. Good luck with your own. Um, again, this is my first time ever trying this. Um, except for the example in the book, which was easy. And I ran into a few roadblocks, but I think you guys saw most of those. I didn't cheat. Um, the mistakes I made, I told you about. And, um, you know, it's good to ask a question here or there, but it wasn't so hard. All right. Like I said, good luck.